And and something I, I think people don't realize is that, you know, epigenetics, which is basically the transference of um, it's it's heritable. Like you can transfer things um, that happen to you in your lifestyle without actually altering the sequence of DNA. And you can do that by changing how much a gene is activated or not activated. And there's been studies, lots and lots of stud studies in animals showing this to be the case. Of course, that's animals and how much of that actually translates to humans. But there was a really interesting study a couple of years ago, I think it was like 2015 that was published, that looked at the effect of obesity. And obesity was actually looked at not in the mothers, but the fathers. Um, and so uh, sperm DNA was collected from, from males that were obese and males that were lean. And they, there's a variety of different genes, like hundreds of different genes that were looked at. And about 300 different genes were different in how they were activated or not activated in the sperm DNA of the obese men. And a lot of those genes had to do with cognition, learning memory, and metabolism. So um, that's very interesting. But what was super interesting was that these men, they were morbidly obese, they were very obese. They underwent uh, bariatric surgery and their sperm DNA was then collected, uh, you know, a couple of months after and then like close to a year after. And as time went on, their sperm DNA looked like the lean people. So the, so wow. basically losing the weight, just losing the weight had an effect on these genes that are involved in cognition and metabolism. And like I said, you know, lots of, of animal studies have shown obesity has a negative effect on like, you know, causing type 1 diabetes later in life and different you know, cognitive disabilities and things like that. So, you know, it is something like p people that are wanting to conceive might might consider, you know, their, you know, their health before trying to procreate. You know, it, it's, it's, I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't procreate if you're not, you know, healthy, but it's just something, you know, another thing to think about. And, and, and also I think it's a motivating factor for people because sometimes you don't care as much about yourself. I mean, some people don't, they're just kind of like, but their child or their unborn child, that's probably, you know, an, a, a driver for, for people to make a change like that. I like, uh, would certainly hope it would be. I mean, you have this opportunity to really literally change the way your child develops. And it's just by your discipline. Right. Just by whether or not you're taking care of your own body. You can literally change the future of your child. So Because you're saying that these genes that are in this obese man's sperm, the way they're represented, they're, that's going to be passed on to the kid. Yeah. Versus the lean version of him. Those genes we've passed on to the kid, the kid literally will have a different starting point exactly. in life. Exactly. A which different is crazy. starting point. It's totally crazy. Yeah. And I mean, of course, the, the child itself can change things through epigenetics, through their right. diet and lifestyle, but you're giving them a baseline here, right? Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's, it's definitely a very, it's a growing field. A lot of the research is done in, in animals because it's really difficult to, to do that sort of these sorts of experiments in humans. But I think that this is sort of a proof of principle at, at the very least mm -hmm. looking at the, the sperm DNA. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's something to consider. And I've had like, like friends of friends that have, you know, that are, that are overweight or obese and wanting to like have children. And, and so it's like, I try to talk to him about that in a, in a way that's not like condescending. Yeah. You know, some people, some people do have a hard time. They try to lose weight and you know, this, they, they have to find the right combination of things that works for them. But, um, but I do think that people would get more motivated if they're like, wow, I can, you know, affect my future child's risk for type one diabetes or for, you know, like how well, what their IQ is, how well they're performing on learning and memory tests. So, and also avoid the horrific guilt that you would feel if you didn't do that and you started to see these things manifesting in your child and right. you realize, oh my God, I set this kid up in a shitty way because I'm lazy, which is essentially what a lot of the problem is with people. It's just they they don't have what whatever the mental, you know, and people get angry if you say that they're, they're lazy because they don't diet. For, forget that word. Forget take, take away the word lazy. You're unmotivated. Let's say that. But for whatever reason, if you choose not to take care of your health and you see that transfer into your child's and you know that you're unhappy with your existence, you know you're unhappy with your physical body, and you refuse to do or for whatever reason don't do enough and then you see these same problems manifesting in your own baby and you realize like oh my god i started this kid off in a shitty way like you're going to be riddled with guilt totally i mean the thing is most people don't know about epigenetics and they don't right. know that they're that they're able to do that so the more 
the more pe- the people are educated, I think the better the outcome will be. But like you said, the people that do know and then still do it, it's like, yeah, the guilt. I mean, that's like unbelievable. Well, it's 